Let's talk Tanya for the 17th of Cheshvan. Today we start a new chapter in Eger Sakhedas, chapter 28. Also, another condolence letter. This one was written by the Altar Rebbe in the year 1805. After the passing of the son of the famous Hasidic master, Rebbe Levi Yitzhak of Radichev, and this was a letter that was addressed to Rebbe Levi Yitzhak of Radichev. Um, the one who passed away was a young man whose name was Reb Meir, and he had a son whose name was Rebbe Eliezer. This Rebbe Eliezer, at the time when this letter was written, at the time of the passing of Reb Meir, was engaged to the granddaughter of the Alter Rebbe, a, a, a wedding which eventually happened a year later. So there was also a family connection that uh, the Alter Rebbe and Rebbe Levitsa are what we call in Yiddish Mechutanim, they're in-laws, or at least uh, about to be in-laws, and this is a letter of condolences that the Alter Rebbe writes. And the content of this letter, the idea in this letter is that the Rebbe is going to talk about what is the significance of the moment of a person's passing in general, and especially the significance of the moment of the passing of a tzaddik. So the Rebbe begins with a teaching from the Talmud. The Talmud points out that if you look in the Torah, in Parshas Chukas, so we have over there this, the, the halachas, all the laws about the red heifer. We know that there is a a spiritual impurity which is associated with um, a dead body. And someone who has contracted that spiritual impurity, the way they're purified is through the sprinkling of the ashes of the red, hef red heifer upon that person. And immediately after the Torah finishes discussing the laws of the red heifer, the Torah tells us the story about the passing of Miriam. And the Talmud asks, why the, what's the connection? Lama nismacha, why is the story of the passing of Miriam, why does it come directly after the laws of the para aduma. Now, in general, whenever the Torah puts two, two, um, two stories or two ideas together, there's a connection between the two of them, but especially over here. Miriam passes away in the 39th year of when the Jewish people were in the desert. The laws of the para aduma were given 38 years earlier. So the fact that the Torah chooses to put one right next to the other is obviously something which uh, raises the, the eyebrows. Why is that? And the Talmud explains the reason why. Is that ma para micha para, so just like the purpose of the red heifer is to bring about atonement. As you know, that part of the idea of the red heifer was that it brings atonement for the chet eagle, the sin of the golden calf. So the same thing is also, misas tzadikim mechaperes, also when a tzaddik passes away, that brings atonement for the generation. So it's something which is interesting, that when a tzaddik passes away, it's like a Yom Kippur, just like we know the Yom Kippur. Um, the day itself... Uh, grants atonement to Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish people, a tzaddik pass, passing away has a, is a similar concept. Now, the Altrema asks a question. Okay, so I get it. You want to put the story of the passing of Miriam, the passing of a tzaddik, next to Paraduma, because you want to bring out that the passing of a tzaddik brings atonement, but you realize there's a classical sacrifice that's brought any time that a person does a sin. It's called a karban chatas, a sin offering, and its purpose is to bring atonement, and it's brought as a sacrifice in the holy temple. It's a carbon, it's holy. Wouldn't it have been more appropriate for the Torah to tell us about the passing of Miriam next to the laws of the carbon chantas? Why is it placed next to the laws of the paraduma? The paraduma is barely a carbon, it's barely a sacrifice. And it was not brought in the holy temple. The paraduma was slaughtered and it was burnt, not only not in the holy temple, it, not even in the city of Jerusalem, outside of the city of Jerusalem. So why is the passing of tzaddikim, why is it compared specifically to the paraduma as opposed to a regular classical sacrifice? So to understand this, Dr. Rebbe says we need to understand the Kabbalah behind sacrifices and the Kabbalah behind the red heifer. The Kabbalah behind sacrifices, and the Dr. Rebbe uses a lot of Kabbalistic language over here, but the point is that when a person brings a carbon so that uh, you cause pleasure above and um, it evokes and it stimulates a flow of divine energy from above, but from where above? From the world of Atsilas, which is a world of godliness, but ultimately it's a world, which means it's within the system, the system that we are familiar with, the system that God put into place. And therefore that flow, when it comes down, it has the ability to bring atonement, but for what? We know that a carbon chatas, the, the sin offering, it only brings atonement for sins that were done by mistake inadvertently. On the other hand, the para aduma, it reaches much higher. The para aduma reaches into what is called keser. Keser is the levels of godliness which is, which are, which is higher than atzilus, beyond atzilus, 
beyond the system. And because it's beyond the system, it has the ability to bring purity even to the greatest impurity possible. You know, impurity symbolizes something which is detached from God. As you know, the impurity which is caused by a corpse is the greatest impurity possible. And within the system, there is no way to purify that. It's too, um, it's too impure. But when you bring down a divine energy from this high level, the word from Kesser, so then we can have the ability to actually to purify even something which has become impure through contact with a corpse. That is the difference between a carbon and the red heifer. How does that connect to the passing of a tzaddik? That we'll find out, God willing, in tomorrow's Let's Talk Tanya.